it's a matter of time other brands will copy you so you have to be always two steps ahead of others a brand has to have a purpose a purpose which is beyond what it does because i strongly believe that entrepreneurs are the ones who are going to take this country to a 5 trillion economy within a short period of time one thing i've realized entrepreneurs are too much in love with their business at an early stage they are so much in love with their business that they are not able to delegate and the other big correction which has come in lately is the importance on governance you know and i have always been telling all the entrepreneurs in ascent anywhere governance has to start from day one when you start a business you can't start taking shortcuts you know i was just thinking i should take my surname from sharma to marivana and screwvana <laughs> One of the big things that we do at TechSparks is we don't do gyan conversations because we all are people working hard. So, what can we learn? And if we have Mr. Mariwala with us, then we have to learn something. And I am very curious about many things. As I said, you built a 68,000 crore brand, and especially in a startup world where we are right now seeing brands, uh, you know, in trouble and uh, uh, being built, and in many cases also getting destroyed. Building a sustainable, lasting, enduring brand, हम सब को लगता है आसान है, मगर नहीं आसान होता है. And you've done it. I really want you to just tell us from your playbook, sir. What does it take? So thank you very much, Shraddha, for calling me first. It's my honor to be in front of all the audience. And uh, yes, brand building. I am not a marketing person, but we build brands. So I think first of all, you need to have. a value proposition which cuts ties with the consumer and that should be differentiated i am a very very strong believer in innovation so in a highly competitive environment to launch a me too brand it will be very difficult to succeed if you have to succeed you have to bring something new something pioneering something differentiated which make which appeals to the consumer so i think that is the starting point but initially it may do well it's a matter of time other brands will copy you so you have to be always two steps ahead of others and go on innovating on a perpetual basis and that's what starts with the brand of course things like brand name is important it should be memorable and as the brand establishes there has to be an emotional contact connect with the consumer there is a rational side to a brand which is is good for me for this reason but emotionally also you have to connect with the consumer and most importantly as the brand's progress further a brand has to have a purpose a purpose which is beyond what it does it has to make a difference to the lives of individuals it touches and i'm talking of i'll just give you one example of a brand like safola we do a lot of things for all the people who are conscious of heart health in terms of camps diet dietitian program uh walkathons uh, instilling the right habits because cardiac issues diabetes is all the lifestyle issues and if you have the right lifestyle you can prevent them so you have to go beyond and for each brand we are i think big brand should have a purpose because that's the purpose is something which will make the brand much more stronger Yeah, and you know, I was, when you were saying Safola, I was thinking we have all grown up in a middle class India where parachute, मतलब parachute is the oil घर सब घर में parachute होता है सब घर में हम Safola and it has stayed the the whole thing is that with so many brands coming in, these brands continue to rule, they continue to stay. Uh, one of course, मतलब what is the secret? I would love to ask you, but most importantly also. that today you have also acquired you are also you know acquiring many new d2c brands and there are a lot of entrepreneurs who tell us about that also so i think uh, fmcg segment which i i'm a part of the fmcg segment it's it was perceived to be a very defensive segment all these years uh because there were a lot of entry barriers entry barriers in terms of uh, need to advertise on on television press on uh, launch would take a uh, advertising budget of something like 25 crores minimum on top of that you needed distribution network 
and in India you see in the number of shops which are there so you needed a strong distribution network unless you had a distribution network you would not be able to distribute brands so if you look at I mean before 3-4 years there were hardly new FMCG companies which came into place but come de- come all the digital revolution and we started seeing that the entry barriers in terms of distribution in terms of the need to spend big money on communication marketing reduced and we've seen emergence of so many D2C brands so in a way a defensive sector has got some degree of threats from the D2C brands so there are two ways of looking at it from an FMCG angle one is how do I protect myself in terms of nullifying threats another is can I also use this from an opportunity point of view you know can I have the lens of opportunity and can I have my own D2C brands can I acquire other D2C brands I think Marico has been the most aggressive amongst all the FMCG companies we have two of our own D2C brands we have acquired four D2C brands starting with Beardo which happened four or five years back then True Elements Just Herbs and last is Plex which is a nutraceutical brand so we have a bouquet of six brands but you need to manage D2C in a different very different way compared to an FFCG business. So from day one, we've ensured that it's a different team. It's a much younger team and it's at a different location. So we don't want the FMCG mindset to to influence the D2C mindset, which is very, very different. And we have done well, I mean, uh, compared to what we started with. Uh, we have done well. Beardo is, I think, averaging around 150 crore turnover and also breaking even. And I, for one, don't believe in very, very long periods of burning money. And the overall guidance given to the team is that D2C brands should turn around at a much shorter time. And I think that's what we are aspiring to do. And we are quite confident that we will uh, we will be able to turn around these D2C brands uh, within, within a short period of time. Yeah, yeah, I'm noticing the short period of time. It has become a very important thing in the startup world this year. Uh, for everyone here, and there are so many entrepreneurs, uh, I want to ask you uh, about Sharp Ventures. It's your family office and $300 million you're uh, investing. Tell us. We are all very curious to know about So, uh, this is a business which is run by my son, okay? I uh, He didn't want to join Marico. And he said that uh, all my, whatever earlier, whenever I used to get dividends from Marico, I would buy more shares of Marico. So, when he came in, he said that, that you all your eggs are in one basket of Marigo, which is doing well. You are managing it, but it's better to diversify and uh, ensure that your risks are better. Uh, you have better risk coverage. So I said, okay, fine, come back with the proposition. And that's how we he started studying. But one thing I had made it very clear that I don't want to invest in debt funds or real estate or precious metals. Just invest in equities. I am very very passionate about entrepreneurs because I strongly believe that entrepreneurs are the ones who are going to take this country a 5 trillion economy within a short period of time. The role of the government is limited. So it's very important to drive entrepreneurship and uh, initially because he was new, we said that okay, we will invest 80% in public markets and 20% in unlisted. He's had a very good track record in the last 3-4 years. So early backer of companies like Mama Earth, Nika, 50x returns <laughs> and now our portfolio is 50% in unlisted and 50% listed because uh, we get a higher delta in unlisted. Of course, there have been some failures, but it's okay to fail, you know. I think any entrepreneur will fail. I don't think there is a single individual in this world who has succeeded without failing because this failure is like learning, you know. Sometimes you win and sometimes you learn and not fail. You know, I was just thinking I should change my surname from Sharma to Marivana and Screwvana because 50x returns and the consistent growth comes from a certain DNA, but most importantly, what I'm, what we all are learning is coming from a certain purpose that one holds true yeah. over the years consistently, and and that brings me to Ascent Foundation and, yeah. and also the event that you're doing in Delhi. Tell us about Ascent Foundation. Yeah. What you're doing? Uh, yeah, thank you, Prashada, for uh, talking about Ascent. Ascent is an initiative I started about ten years back. Uh, the whole purpose of Ascent was to help entrepreneurs scale up, learn from each other, and make newer entrepreneurs. And uh, this is something which is funded by me. If you, any of you have uh, a business above a certain size, if you are in manufacturing, the minimum size is 5 crores. 
if you are a services minimum size is 1 crore you just have to go to www.snfoundation.in and fill in a form and then you'll be called for an interview we want entrepreneurs who are hungry to grow and uh, those who have a burning desire to succeed and we are creating platforms for learning from each other so we will we currently have about 1000 entrepreneurs uh, mainly in bombay and then we started a chennai chapter and now we are starting a delhi chapter next month so 1000 entrepreneurs today are contributing to an aggregate turnover of 85000 crores which who are actually associated with ascent you have to devote 3 to 4 hours a month and learn from other entrepreneurs so all you all i require from all of you is a time commitment but i can assure you that there will be a lot of take home value because all of us have blind spots we are not able to visualize what is needed for our business and when you are in a group of what 8 or 10 uh, entrepreneurs from diverse backgrounds you get inputs which are very very valuable and my target for ascent is over a period of time uh 1000 going to 10000 entrepreneurs and 85000 crore turnover going to 10 lakh turnover because as i said i am very passionate i do mentoring uh entrepreneurs of ascent on average i have 5 to 6 mentoring sessions and i really enjoy spending time with entrepreneurs and that gives me a lot of energy and excitement you know that has got me a little distracted to a conversation that i want to ask you right now we are all uh, in the startup world and otherwise also you know we heard about nitin tamat and the stroke that he's yes, got and yes. it's very very unfortunate because he is someone i really deeply respect and he regularly comes to tech park so so i know that you are into fitness and uh, at your age which you can tell us <laughs> uh you know somewhere as entrepreneurs we have all kinds of conversations yeah. but we don't don't have conversations on how to take care of ourselves and you can only play long innings and good innings if you are yeah. you are absolutely right but fitness is just not physical fitness fitness is mental fitness spiritual fitness physical fitness emotional fitness so you have to look at fitness from all the different angles and based on whatever i read about nitin kamath i think he was undergoing some stress and lack of sleep sleep is very very important to one has to sleep for 6 7 hours you can't say that i will cut down my sleep hours to 4 hours so i think it's very important to have a balanced lifestyle and that's what i believe in uh, in terms of doing things work of course and there is stress and every person going goes through stress but there have to be some ways to how do you alleviate stress you know i mean what is the thing which is i mean on a daily basis i go to the gym to to remove my stress somebody has maybe listening to music or going for a walk but the most important thing when you're going through an issue is to actually talk to others you know because when you talk to others you may not even get that advice but the fact that you i've been able to talk to you about my issues and you have been listening to me and agreeing with me that itself is a big relief for me you know so mental health is very very crucial and i don't know whether you are aware but i i do a lot of philanthropy in the area of mental health which my daughter manages it's under the name of marival health initiative we are a grant making organization uh, supporting other organizations in the area of mental health we do research we come out with reports on suicide prevention how do you improve mental health in offices and things like that so i think mental health also is very important but it has to be balanced you know physical fitness mental emotional uh, and spiritual also i think it adds and if you do all that you will lead a very good life thank you for emphasizing on this i want to ask you a question and again startup ecosystem i would say in india is still relatively very young and 15 years of age as of today so we are still maybe teenagers but one of the things mr mariwala that one has to call out about you that in marico you brought professional leadership you are the founder you started it and you also have demonstrated attachment and detachment yeah. tell us about that because hum chhod nahi pate hain gaddi yeah i think uh, one thing i've realized entrepreneurs are too much in love with their business at an early stage they are so much in love with their business that they are not able to delegate and they want to have a say in each and every matter now when you are small you are doing things on your own when you start but when you become medium size you get things done from others you have a team and your leadership style has to change you know you have to empower others of course you have to select the right team your whole 
think changes, you have to build the processes, you have to have team building exercises, ensure that you are the leader of the time which motivates the team. So your role shifts from doing things to getting things done. And when you are really large, the role again shifts from getting things done to influencing others. Because a lot of people are working for you and you have to influence their thinking. If you are wanting to do innovation, then you have to excite them to do innovation. Because innovation happens amongst all of us and not just at the top layers or in the R&D department. So I think your role, role shifts to, uh, to influencing others. Now, my own, uh, I have bent on shifting and that's what I realized that most entrepreneurs are not able to make those shifts because they are too much in love. And at some stage, I think I realized that I was already managing the company for almost, I built the company from scratch, managing the company for almost 40 years and uh, realized that it's better that it changes hands. Somebody else manages because you need some new blood, you need some younger blood. The environment is going on changing. So I stepped down, but stepped down and gave reins to somebody who, who was working with me for 10 years. But it was very important for me to step down and also not interfere in what he was doing. So we first thing we did was we wrote down what will I do, what will that person do, the MD. And we it's very, very clear because most of the time, again, entrepreneurs, they interfere a lot, you know. And the professionals don't like this interfering on a day-to-day -day basis, you know. They want a free hand. Uh, of course, in important things like acquisitions or some urgencies or something which is uh, which is an emergency, entrepreneur has to step in. But by and large, today if you ask me, hands off. My hand, I don't on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't decide anything. Nothing comes to me on a day-to-day -day basis, but mind on 24 by 7. What can I do differently? How can I add value? So my whole objective is to add value. If I am traveling, then you know I go to the market or if I am traveling abroad, I look at the trends, read, and then try and influence others by adding value. So it's not control orientation, but it's more value addition. It is a very important time in our country and it is also a very important time, I would say, also for the startup ecosystem because 2021, yeah. we all experienced, at least I really wanted to leave startup ecosystem because everyone was getting funded and everyone was becoming unicorn to the point that today no one wants to <laughs> associate with the word unicorn. Yeah. So what are you going to you know what do what do we think about what do we do because there is suddenly this feeling that capital is not as available as it was it's harder to build now what do you have to say so i think it's a correction in my opinion i think sometime back maybe one or two years back when there was abundance of capital and you know funders were willing to fund businesses which were not doing well financially over a long period of time and they realized that now there has to be some shift in terms of the expectations from the funders, which is good actually. I I like this because that correction was needed. And the other big correction which has come in lately is the importance on governance. You know, And I've always been telling all the entrepreneurs in Ascent anywhere, governance has to start from day one when you start a business. You can't start taking shortcuts at that time because then if you start taking shortcuts and you grow, it will be very difficult for down the line to change that culture of the organization. And we've seen, I mean, so many good businesses getting destroyed because they took some shortcuts. You have to pay a very, very important uh, thing to governance beyond compliance. Yeah, and at least for all of us, we as people in this startup ecosystem, we are experiencing it. Yeah. So hopefully we'll build it in our journeys. But there will be funders, I can tell you, if you have a good proposition, there are enough and more funders looking for viable businesses. But uh, they want entrepreneurs who they can trust. They want entrepreneurs who just not s drive the top line, but conscious of driving the bottom line over a period of time. Of course, from day one, you don't expect that to happen. But you can't, for 20 years, you can't go on driving top line and not look at bottom line. Uh, b one clarification, Sharp Ventures is uh, uh, investing primarily in D2C brands or it's across sectors? So it is... It's more D2C, but more consumer-facing because that's what we understand the businesses. So more consumer-facing businesses um, need not be D2C. Like we've invested in uh, Bira, which is uh, some time back, you know, which is in beer and all that. So we also invest in some other uh, service businesses, but primarily consumer-facing businesses because we understand that. 
and uh, I also mentor many of the investors so because they need something and not only me but I use the whole Marico system to help them so that's the value proposition Sharp provides that if you are in consumer facing and if you invest then you will get not only time from me but if need be any part of Marico whether it's marketing or production or distribution if there are, there are some issues you are facing then I will arrange those meetings uh, we are working on problem of unclaimed assets so I think uh, most of us here are today struggling startups or new startups. So what would be your advice to us, uh, especially with winter funding winter? Like uh, yeah. what was your experience in uh, bootstrapping? You have to get money. Either you are bootstrapped or you get money from some friends or relatives. But I mean, you need to, otherwise you will fall flat. If depends on how well you do it. But in the initial stages, most businesses go through setbacks, you know. You have to be overfunded and you can't just say that I will fund it. This is my projection. I'll only have this much funds. You have to have some contingency funds also, you know, uh, to take care of contingency. Otherwise, when the business is scaling up, you every person goes through setbacks. And in a new setup, there will be some learning curve. So you have to be a little bit more conservative in terms of ensuring that the funds are enough for you to, to manage those setbacks. Where to get the funds from, I don't know. But you have to find your own answer. There are multiple options. Uh, whether it's family offices or friends or families or whoever else. So, Mr. Marivala, now that you're sitting here, I have a very quick question for you. You, you know, because we really don't get leaders like you with your kind of experience of building a business. You know, you've done everything, right? Mariko, as I said, 68,000 crore brand, everything, fun, you know, big, big, big. One thing, if you had to go back and do differently. Differently. From your vantage point today. I mean, we could have grown much faster. We, we lost out on some opportunities. And many times on talent, you know, we have to have the best quality talent. Because ultimately in any business, an FMCG more because owning a factory is not important. Creating brands out of nothing is important. Creating formulations out of nothing is important. Creating distribution is important. But I, I wish I was far more, shall I say, demanding in terms of the quality of talent, it could have given us, uh, it could have given us better returns. But I'm happy. I don't have any regrets. We went through a learning curve. Uh, my organization is, uh, I would say, the, uh, you know, bootstrap startup. It's a four years plus venture by now. Uh, in case we want to be a bootstrap throughout the life, right, you know, and at the same time, we want to scale at regular interval, you know, what should we keep in mind always? So that at least we stay pushed up without any funding, but yeah, we scale at regular interval. See, the lack of resources should not come in the growth of the business. I am very clear. You know, if your business is opportunity, then you are saying I have to be bootstrapped. I am willing to miss out on opportunity. Then it's not a good sign, okay. because opportunity tackling. So you, if need be, business comes first, and then you can't say that I have to be bootstrapped all my time and the business let business suffer. You know, if need be, then you have to raise money from some other sources. You know. If the business requires that. So my question is, if I specifically talk about parachute product, uh, from last 10 to 20 years, what I remember, the packaging, the ingredient like coconut, it's uh, always been same. And uh, so many trends, so many things come and gone, but you guys have always stick to that. Matlab, never tempted to change something. And relevantly, my question is how to you know stick to that thing if you know you are doing right and not get distracted with other better cooler things so you're right the basic parachute coconut oil has changed because beyond a point you can't do anything it's a pure coconut oil you know but we have many extensions parachute is something like 10 or 15 extensions that that is growing much more so parachute aloe vera parachute ayurvedic parachute hair cream parachute uh, many many other uh, extensions onion oil so we drive growth through the, through the extensions we also have gone into skincare, parachute, body lotion. Um, and now we have just launched a parachute uh, baby products and in, uh, in it's just now being prototyped in Andhra Pradesh, baby range. But uh, unfortunately, there is very little we can do to the basic product. And uh, the quantities we pack is so large that we can't spend too much money on improving our packaging because uh, we, I mean, for your benefit, we... We back something like seven crore parachute bottles every month. So, you know, just to change a little bit, adding value, it goes into crores and crores cost and we have to be cost conscious. Thank you so much, Mr. Marivala. Thank you for taking out time and talking to all of us. It has been such an honor.
and look forward to see more of you at Dutch Parts. Thank you.